Hi and welcome to DevOpsCon. I'm here with Jerome Petazzoni. Hi. Hi. How was your session? What did you talk about? So today I had a, a session that was a first for me. It was a vendor talk <laughs> about the differences between Docker Community Edition and Enterprise Edition. Uh, and so I was doing demos on what we can do with the Docker open source project and what we can do with Docker commercial products as well. Well, then what's the difference between them? So the Community Edition uh, is free and uh, is available on a number of platforms. That's, for instance, what you get when you run Docker for Mac. Um, and you can build, chip, and run apps uh, with that Community Edition. But then the Enterprise Edition uh, comes with a subscription model. Uh, so meaning that that's how you end up actually giving money to, to Docker Inc. for the products they make and has a number of extra features uh, like they have uh, web interfaces, you have user management, uh, you can set visibility on services and containers and BIOS projects uh, to make sure, for instance, that uh, your production applications are only uh, visible and editable by your ops team and that your developer uh, team can't, by malice or by mistake, uh, touch your production applications. And uh, Docker is quite new, um, isn't it? Um, Docker has been around now for almost four years uh, and in, in software terms uh, it's both new and old. Uh, it's new in the sense that four years is not a long time to have a major product uh, but it's also old in the sense that in four years uh, in the startup and software world uh, you have many releases, you have many things happening. Um, there are people today who are wondering can I go to production with Docker? But um, four years ago, there were already people in production with Docker and very happy about it. So we have this, um, this interesting challenge where we, we must show how people can go to production with Docker. And at the same time, we have people who have been using it for uh, a pretty long time now. And so we need to put these stories on, on front on, on the stage uh, so that people can trust Docker for production workloads. This is one of the myths surrounding Docker, right? Uh, in production versus uh, how to use uh, um, Docker. Yeah, there are. <laughs> the, in my presentation, I was talking about two myths around Docker. Myth number one is, oh my god, Docker Inc. doesn't have a business model. And well, Docker Inc. has a business model. And uh, that business model uh, looks in some aspects like the one of other companies like Red Hat, for instance. When, when Linux started to be a thing, uh, almost 20 years ago, uh, a lot of people didn't really think that it would be possible to make money from Linux. Well, look at Red Hat, and I think we can say that Red Hat is a very successful company uh, making money with Linux. So with Docker, it's, it's the same thing. We have a business model. We have had a business model for years. So now we just have to let people know that we have this business model and those commercial products. Yeah. Including Docker EE, I assume. Docker EE <laughs> being like one, the, the, one of the products, and in particular, the enterprise product, which is uh, where there is a, a lot of money to be made with production applications. And uh, well, although it's only four years old, um, it has quite a few achievements under its belt, Docker, I mean. For example, uh, Stack, uh, Stack Overflow um, gathered some data on this year's hiring trends and it found out that Docker is the second most in-demand technology. So I guess that's a very good thing for Docker and people who want to use it. But um, why do so many people use Docker? What's so special about it? So why do so many people use Docker? I, I think uh, it's because Docker can touch so many different aspects uh, of a developer's workflow uh, from the, um, one of my favorite demos a couple of years ago was, oh, hello, I'm a developer and this is my first day in my new job and I need to set up everything. And usually this takes a while, especially when you have to work with complex application stacks. But with Docker and using uh, Compose, which is one of the tools of the Docker ecosystem, uh, I can in just a few minutes uh, get a full development environment up and running on my machine and I can leave behind me uh, all the problems of package 
package management, wrong version, invalid library, etc., etc. Uh, so for developers, uh, Docker is often like great news. Um, then it also helps uh, hosting people because they they can consolidate and put more applications on the same machines. Uh, hosting is application hosting, obviously. Um, it's also great news uh, when you want to take those development applications and take them to production and keep the same environment. So to me, the fact that Docker is one of the top conversation topics on Stack Overflow, for instance, and um, it, it, it's not surprising. It's probably just like virtualization maybe 10 years ago, because virtualization started as uh, something specifically for hosting providers. Um, and little by little, uh, virtualization gave us the cloud. Um, and today, I think Docker is doing the same thing. Containers started initially as something, again, for hosting providers. Oh, I can put more customers on the same machine. That's more money for me, great. Um, and then uh, it expands to be something awesome for uh, dev environments, for continuous integration, testing, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and uh, what's next for Docker in terms of releases, roadmap, etc.? What's next for Docker? So we are, we are about to release Docker 1706. Uh, that's going to be an interesting release because in, the, in our new release model, we have the edge releases every month that have the, all the new features um, like as, as soon as possible, basically. And then we have the stable releases every three months. And this will be a stable release. So there will be a lot of the new features uh, that uh, landed in, in the Edge branch the, in the last three months are going to be in the stable release, like the ability to uh, stream logs uh, straight from the command line, uh, secrets. Uh, I think we also have config blobs arriving in, in 17.06. Um, so for the people running uh, the stable version, it will be like a bonanza of, of new features because all the features that have been held back the last few months will land and for the people who are in the edge release it will be like a, maybe a slightly less impressive release because it's just one month worth of features but that, that's the kind of thing that we will see and what's your personal favorite release so far uh, my personal favorite release so far um, I that's really a tough question. Uh, I, I, would, I think I have two favorite releases. Uh, one would be the 112 release, which was the one when we added Swarm mode, uh, because uh, quite honestly, when doing demos of Swarm mode uh, to people with a NOP sysadmin SRE background, so people who are responsible for running Docker in production, seeing the kind of uh, let's say the, the smile of understanding and was, was really extremely rewarding. We had people looking at the demo and at the end being like, wow, that's by leaps and bounds way better than what we hoped for. And we, we are so happy to see that Docker has been listening to what we wanted. And the simplicity of the demos and everything, that, that was really like seeing those people being happy was, uh, really rewarding by itself. And the second one would maybe a much older release, which I think would be 0.6 or 0.7, because I think it's the last time that I did a small contribution to the Docker code base. <laughs> um, well, we did a small research and we actually found out that 12 was among our readers, of course, the most popular, so I share your opinion. Um, and um, one last question, it's a bit general. Uh, how can we use containers to drive agility? How can we use containers to drive agility? I, I think um, I, I, I'm ten tempted to say just by using containers, you will already be making some progress, um, even if you don't do anything special. Uh, just because if you, if you look at... Uh, uh, I had a table in my very early Docker presentations when I was trying to explain the concept behind containers, uh, showing physical machines, virtual machines, containers, and showing how long it takes when you want one, how, want, how long it takes to provision and configure it, and how long it takes to boot it. And of course, from physical to virtual to containers, you can see that the times are shorter and shorter. When you order a physical machine, it takes a few days before it shows up at your door. When you 
order a container, it takes a few seconds. And restarting uh, a container can be done even in milliseconds now. So even just moving to containers, if you are using physical machines or virtual machines, will give you a, a little speed boost just because of that. And then, because you're starting to use containers, uh, you can leverage all this um, independence from the, uh, the architecture you're running on. You can leverage um, quicker scaling. You can leverage uh, all the ecosystem around Docker, all the continuous integration platforms, etc., etc. So I would, my my advice my, my advice is, you don't have to like go through a specific um, workflow or thing. You can just get started with containers, and you will you will already reap some some benefits. And little by little, the, the, the gains that you can make will just appear by themselves. Mm -hmm. And use Docker, of course, <laughs> right? Um, <laughs> use Docker or use any container platform. I mean, we, we try to make Docker the best platform for devs and ops to run any kind of application. I believe that we, we are, without a doubt, extremely successful with developers. Like, developers love Docker. Um, we are pretty successful with ops, um, but we want to to continue to improve on that side and to uh, so that Docker is the best platform for anyone. But the fact that there are other platforms is also extremely important for us uh, because we want to show that there is interoperability mm -hmm. and we want to show that there is a platform. You can get Docker stuff, but then you can have third-party uh, plugins and applications and uh, extraneous features coming from other people. That's um, I don't remember the exact figure, but I remember at some point uh, hearing uh, our CEO say for for every dollar that Docker makes, there should be ten dollars that are made by the ecosystem around it. Right? Something like that. So that's what we that, that's our goal. That's awesome. <laughs> Good luck with attracting more ops and perhaps supporting DevOps if devs and ops work together. Uh, yeah. Thank you very much. And um, yeah. Thank you. Have fun at the Thank conference. Thank you. <laughs> we'll do.